Players of the tournament, folks, Rugby World Cup 2023, potentially, possibly, probably last video on Rugby World Cup stuff. It's a week almost until the competition concluded. South Africa's champions, they are back home celebrating. New Zealand's back home. Uh, Fozzie's firing a few shots. Eddie Jones has left the Wallabies. It's all going on. But let's go through the teams and choose a player from each team to highlight as their kind of player of the tournament. I wanted to put a little bit of a different spin on this because there's a million different teams of the tournament out there already. You don't need me adding another one to that, but let's highlight some of the key performers and you guys can let us know your thoughts. I'm going to start with the Namibian, and I find I have a penchant for loose forwards, actually. Uh, Richard Hardwick is definitely one of the best players in the Namibian outfit. They got a few hidings. But Hardwick still looked the, the, the best player on the team when he was playing. He was benched for one of the games because they wanted to rest him for the Uruguay game. He beat seven defenders. He had 59 run meters in his games. He had 29 carries, made 35 tackles. Was just generally one of the better players on that uh, Namibian team. I don't know how you build depth in Namibia. But um, yeah, certainly having Hardwick there was a nice one. Uh, another loose forward, and I've gone with the turnover machine from Uruguay, Manuel Ardal. Seven turnovers won in the four games that he played is a pretty incredible effort. So certainly one of the most dangerous guys at the breakdown. Had a couple of clean breaks and defenders beaten as well. But uh, yeah, certainly a bloody menace at the breakdown. And then uh, for... The Italians, I've gone with another Manuel. This time it's uh, Manuel Zuliani. A bit of a super sub is old Zuliani. Like in a campaign which for Italy went poorly. He played 37 minutes, 31 minutes, 21 minutes and 33 minutes. So never even got 40 minutes in a game. And yet he still finished with two tries. He finished with 100 plus run meters from 12 carries, which is a great return. He beat six defenders and won three turnovers. He is an absolute super sub. So one of the bright spots on a pretty disappointing Italian campaign. For the Romanians, I don't know, man. Their campaign was pretty much all round bad. Adrian Motok, though, finished their top tackler. The big lock won a couple of lineouts, had a few carries. But yeah, she was generally a tough one in old, uh, in old Pool B. I got to get a prop in here for Tonga. An old Big Ben Tommy Afuna. Goodness gracious me. What a shift. If he played for a country like South Africa or New Zealand, all blacks maybe, missed a trick by not picking him because he a, he's a local Auckland boy. Um, man, he was good at the World Cup. Two tries. He got 68 run meters and included a clean break. How does Ben Tommy Afuna get a clean break? He beat nine defenders. He tackled at 91%. He's a massive unit of a man, constantly Tonga's best player at this World Cup. Captain the side as well at times. So, yeah, what a fantastic shift uh, from him. For Scotland, I've gone with your probably new best number seven and old Rory Dodge. I mean, he's a defensive masterclass, isn't he? 96% was his tackling rate. Um, he won a turnover. He got a couple of tries, beat a few defenders. So... Yeah, I think he's kind of supplanted Hamish Watson in that role. And because he's playing really well. Uh, I've only got very limited space here. So sorry to Mark Nawani Tawase. I'm just going to put his first name there. Mark Nawani Tawase from the Wallabies in what was a pretty poor campaign. He still looks great at international level, man. Bags a couple of tries. He plays all four of the games. He beats 11 defenders and gets three clean breaks, which was a pretty bright spot, as I mentioned, on the campaign, which didn't go that flash. Um, he gets three clean breaks that I mentioned that 286 meters defensive numbers not great he is a winger so that's not why he's in the side uh, but yeah I still think he looks dangerous chases high balls for days and likes to try and slap them back which is an asset in the game uh, Portugal I've gone with Nicholas Martins the loose forward who if you played the fantasy game will know that guy was absolutely everywhere in what was a pretty good Portuguese campaign he finished with a tackling rate of 88%, which is cracking. Six defenders beaten, four clean breaks, 196 meters, a try. So he's getting seven meters a carry for a flanker. Pretty good, pretty good numbers. So yeah, man, absolutely a real star of the show for Portugal. 
Uh, for Georgia, he's another guy with a kind of long last name, so I'm just going to put his first name there. But David uh, Niniashvili, the fullback, he is by far their most dangerous player. He only played the four games, mostly a fullback, one on the wing. 22 defenders beaten, eight clean breaks, 425 meters, a try, an assist. He even kicks two long-range penalties, makes 11 from 11 tackles. His big area of concern was the drop ball. So, yeah, a little bit of pill go at times. I seem to remember him passing. Was it to one of the Wallabies guys? It's been a while since I can't, I can't quite remember. But, yeah, uh, at times a little bit hit and miss. But overall, pretty effective. Uh, for Japan, I've gone with a veteran in Michael Leach. He rolled back the clock. The, what is he, 35-year-old bagged a couple of tries, including um, an important one in that game against, was it Samoa? When all the loose forwards got tries. Labas Kakni got one, Leach got one, and Himeno got one. Three turnovers, one for him as well. He wins lineouts, 97 meters, plays all four of the games. 59 out of 62 tackles. Great shift. Great shift from Michael Leach. For Samoa, I've got one of the super subs in Sama Malolo. Another guy who comes off the bench and adds some impact. He starts the last game for Samoa, but the first three games he comes off the bench and he still manages three tries. His attacking numbers for a reserve hooker are amazing. 88 meters, 12 defenders beaten. Gets a clean break. He gets the one start against England. His defensive numbers aren't great, but if you need a guy to come off the bench, get you some, get you some meters and break some bodies, Sama Malolo is, uh, is certainly your guy. Uh, for Chile, I've gone with Domingo Saavedra, the midfielder. They had a pretty tough time over the Chileans in their first World Cup, but he still looked the business, plays all four games. He also beats three defenders, 86 metres, wins a couple of turnovers, and misses a few tackles, but a lot of the Chilean guys uh, miss a few tackles. I could have gone for um, Sigrun, the captain, but I've already got a heap of loose forwards on my list, so I wanted to get a midfielder on there, and Domingo Saavedra, I thought, looked pretty good. For Wales, I've gone with Captain, co-captain, Jack Morgan. Really impressive from Jack. I mean, they'll be disappointed to go out in the quarters when they did after a great pool stage. But he's going to be one for the future, and he's one for the here and now as well. Two tries and an assist from him. 90-odd metres for a loose forward in the games that he played. Beat eight defenders, had a couple clean breaks. 60-plus tackles, four turnovers, one. Jack Morgan is an absolute revelation. And then uh, another loose forward, Lavani Bottia. I mean, he's a turnover merchant as well, isn't he? Very similar to um, to Adal for, for Uruguay. Might have played a game extra, but Botia, seven turnovers won, beat seven defenders. His offloading game was on point, man. He five offloads across the tournament. So, yeah, that was him. Speaks to the way this Fijian side can play. Uh, not just all the kind of flashy stuff, but it, of course includes a bit of the flashy stuff. Uh, Ireland, I've gone with Bundy Aki. He was in kind of career best form. Uh, five tries and an assist. Really, God, he was dangerous. 447 meters, beat 30 defenders and had 10 clean breaks. Won a couple of turnovers as well. Was on absolute fire. Uh, for France, I've gone with the right winger, old Damien Penot. He was also absolutely unplayable at times finished with six tries before they went out in the quarters 350 meters from 43 carries that's eight meters a carry which is nuts 13 clean breaks 22 defenders beaten yeah an absolute weapon uh for france for argentina uh marcos crema another lucy i just love my tackling machines and that's exactly what marcos crema did he played all their games he's the top tackler of the rugby world cup with, uh, was it 91? It's a lot of tackles. He uh, He's the top carrying forward. He didn't get any cards. He can be a bit of a loose cannon. He won four turnovers. He still managed 90 meters in his games, even though he's not like a traditional ball carrying Lucy. But man, Marcos Kremer was effective for England. Ben Earl, I think, is an easy pick. Like some of these picks are going to be very debatable, but Ben Earl was unbelievable. Second top tackler of the comp. Top English ball carrier. Top England guy for clean breaks, which is nuts because he's a loose forward, not not a winger. I mean, if Henry Arundel had played more games, he probably would have got more, but such is the, the way things go. He managed the try, three turnovers. Ben Earl was on absolute fire. 
the loose forward theme continues with Adi Savia. Goodness me, he had 298 meters for a Lucy, five clean breaks for a Lucy, 27 defenders beaten. He made 56 out of his 59 tackles. He had four turnovers, one absolutely insane. And for South Africa, I could have gone with a Lucy, but I ended up going with this man. He may not have had the same impact on the final as the likes of a Peter Steff, but if not for Chesney and Colby, man, you guys don't get out of the quarters. I mean, that charge down conversion and that, um, that try that he scored in that game against France, unbelievable. 375 meters uh, from his 28 carries is 13 meters a carry. That's insane. Nobody gets close to that that I've got on this piece of paper. Uh, 11 defenders beaten, 7 clean breaks, tackled at 89%. He got a yellow card in the final. You know, the final wasn't a game where they were really able to kind of get it to him to, to show us what he could do like in the 2019 final. But man, I think Cheslin Colby across the course of the tournament was an absolute weapon. But Peter Steff is, if I've gone from a recency bias, but I've already got so many Lucys. I mean, he managed one prop, which is disgraceful. Uh, one hooker, which is also disgraceful. I've been a bit stingy on the locks as well. Uh, I can see. No, no tens. No nines. Apparently, I just love loose forwards. That's what this tells me. But, um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. How do you reckon each of the teams would go? Who would be your pick for kind of top player of each team? You guys let us know your thoughts. The World Cup is done. Me and Tony broke it down on the podcast the other day. If you haven't seen it, Two Cents gets distracted. We were a little bit miserable. But um, I don't think you'll blame us for that one. You guys take care of yourselves. And, uh, yes, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.